In this video, we're going to look at how to figure out the number of electrons in each shell and the number of valence electrons for an element. To do this, you need to be able to write the electron configuration in the long way, so make sure if you haven't done so to watch the video on electron configuration before watching this video. So let's learn by example. Let's say we're going to do Cl. So to write the electron configuration for Cl, I'm going to start at the top left-hand corner because I want to write it the long way so that I can exactly see how many electrons are in each shell. So Cl is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5. Again, if you need help with that, watch the previous video. Now, it's important to remember what these numbers mean. The number in front tells me the shell that I'm in. Um, and you might see the word electron shell, or you might see the word energy level, or even principal energy level, and they all mean the same thing. Electron shell, energy level. Okay, the letter tells me what subshell I'm in. So I might see an S, P, D, or F to indicate the type of subshell or sublevel. Those words are synonymous. And the exponent is telling me how many electrons are in that particular subshell in that energy level. So if I see 1s2, it's telling me there are two electrons in the s subshell that's in the first energy level. So if I want to figure out how many electrons are in the first shell, all I have to do is look for wherever there is a 1 in front and add up all the exponents for that particular energy level. So there's a 1 in front here, and I only see that there's 2 electrons, so my first energy level has 2 electrons. And that makes sense because we said only 2 electrons could fit in the first shell, and this is why, because there's only an S subshell which can hold 2. So if I wanted to represent this electron configuration in another way, I can write it with dashes to show how many electrons are in each shell. So there's 2 electrons in the first shell. Let's figure out how many electrons are in the second shell or in the second energy level. Again, those terms are synonymous. So let's go everywhere there's a 2 in front. So where is there a 2 in front? Here there's a 2 in front. Here there's a 2 in front. So both of these subshells are in the second energy level. There are 2 electrons in, the in 2s, and there are 6 electrons in 2p. So in total, there are 8 electrons in the second shell. So again, I'm going wherever there's a 2 in front and adding up those exponents to give me the total number of electrons in that shell. They just happen to be in two different places. Two of these electrons are in a 2s subshell, and 6 of the electrons are in a 2p subshell. Okay, and for the third energy level, I'm doing the exact same thing. Wherever there is a 3 in front, that would represent the third energy level or the third electron shell. So I'm going to add up the numbers there. There's a 2 electrons in the S subshell, and there's 5 in the P. So in total, that gives me 7. And there's no electrons in the fourth energy level because I've, they don't have any parts of the configuration left that have a 4 in front. So this dashed way is a good way of showing how many electrons are in each shell. Now if I ask you for the number of valence electrons, remember what valence means. Valence is the number of outermost electrons. So they are the electrons that are in the last shell or the last energy level. So it will just be that last number. So again, the biggest number I see in front is a 3, and I'm just adding up those numbers for, that are all in the third shell which represents the last number in the dashed way. Now, as you get further and further down the periodic table, um, you're going to have more and more sets of numbers, and they might be more spread out. Remember, 3D comes in after 4S, and then eventually we get to 4F a lot further down the way. So make sure you write out the long configuration and that you consider all of the numbers. So let's do another example for practice. Let's try... SE, which is right here. So writing out the configuration the long way, again, there's a video you can reference if you need to, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. Now I'm in the fourth row before s2. Remember when we get to d, it's really one energy level back. So even though it's um, in the fourth row, we write 3d10. The third, uh, the d block 
where the D subshell of the third energy level gets filled after 4S. Okay, now we're back to the P block, so we're going to do 4P, um, and we just count, we get 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so make sure that the D is really one energy level back. So whatever row you're in, you put one less than the row um, number. So if I'm doing this, again, the number in front represents the shell. So let's look at wherever I have a one in front will represent the first shell. So here's a one in front. So there's just two electrons in the first shell. Okay, let's do it for the second energy level. Here's a two in front, here's a two in front. I add those exponents, six plus two gives me eight. And you're gonna start to see that the maximum number of electrons in the first shell is two. The maximum number of electrons in the second energy level is eight because there are only S and P together, which count as two plus six or eight. Okay, wherever there's a three, here's a three, here's a three. Oh, keep going because here's a three as well. So I add two plus six, plus 10, and I get 18 electrons in the third energy level. You'll see that 18 is the maximum number of electrons in the third energy level because the third energy level has S, P, and D subshells, which hold a max of 18, two and six and 10, okay? And then my fourth energy level, wherever there's a four in front, I add up those exponents, two plus four gives me six. So this dashed way shows me how many electrons are in each shell. So if I ever see a question asking about the number of electrons in a shell, I go to that number. There's two in the first shell, because that's the first number, eight in the second, 18 in the third, and six in the fourth. The fourth shell is also my valence shell. It's the outermost energy level. So if I asked about valence electrons, there are six valence electrons. What you notice is that because D is always an energy level back, the D electrons will never count as valence electrons. Neither will the F. So the maximum number of electrons is going to be eight. Let's do one more example. Let's do PB, um, which falls under SN. So I drew it right in because I ran out of elements in my table here. Um, so PB, doing out the electron configuration from the top, 1S2. 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, we hit the d block, so we put one level back, 3d10, back to the p, so we can put the rower in, 4p6, now we're in the fifth row, 5s2, we hit the d, so we're one level back, 4d10, 5p6, now I'm in the sixth row, I do 6s2. Six and if you notice, it kind of reminds you here in this table, you're actually going down to the F block here. So if I remember, the F is really two energy levels back. So even though it's like I'm in the sixth row, I put two less than the number in front. So I put four F and I hit 14 boxes. Now I'm back in D, which is just one energy level back. So I do 5, D, 10. Let's see if I can fit it. And now I'm in P, so I'm back to the row that I'm in, 6, P, and I hit two boxes to land on PB. So remember that F, which comes in after here in 6S, so it's 4F. If I was going through the periodic table, the, the next row would be 7S, then 5F, then 6D, then back to 7P, but I don't have to go that far, okay? This is a long one. Okay, so now I could do the numbers of electrons in each shell. In the first shell, there's only a one here, so there's two electrons in the first shell. In the second shell, here's a two and here's a two. I add up those exponents, two and a six, and I get eight in the second shell. Makes sense, that's the maximum. Let's find where there's a three in front, here's a three in front, here's a three in front, here's a three in front. That represents the third shell, so if I add those exponents, I get 18. Now let's consider the fourth shell. Be careful because there's more than one place that you can find the fourth shell. You've gotta go through the whole number here. So here's a four in front, Here's a four in front, keep going. Here's a four in front, and all the way over here, there's a four in front. So there's two in the S, there's six in the P, there's 10 in the D, and there's 14 in the F, which add up to 32. So be careful with that one. Okay, on to the fifth energy level. Okay, let's go where there's a five. Here's a five, here's a five, here's a five. So there's two, 
plus 6 is 8, plus 10 is 18 in the fifth energy level. And lastly, let's do the sixth energy level. Here's a 6, here's a 6. Add up those exponents, 2 plus 2, and that gives me four electrons in the sixth energy level, which is my outermost shell or my last shell, so there are four valence electrons. For valence electrons, it might also just be helpful to know how many valence electrons just looking at the periodic table and the group that it's in. So group one will always have one valence electron, two will always have two. Skipping over the transition metals because there are some anomalies that happen that will have around two valence electrons because remember the D electrons don't count as valence, they're really an energy level back. Um, but then skipping over to the um, P block, these will have three valence, four valence, five valence, six valence, seven, and the group 18, the noble gases, will have eight, except for helium, which has two. It doesn't have enough valence electrons to get to eight. However, it still has a full shell because only two electrons can fit in the first shell. So it's really helpful to just be able to eyeball and look where something is on the periodic table to figure out the valence electrons rather than writing out the whole electron configuration, though you can do both.